Here is the Wheeler Engineering um, Professional Digital Trigger Gauge. Just going to take a quick look at it and how to use it. Um, kind of a review. I'm just making this for anyone out there who's um, gonna actually going to be using mine or just in general thinking about this. Just going to go over some of the quick features and um, that you might not know about. All right, so here's the instruction manual. It's just a single sheet. Go ahead and pause it if you need to read anything. I have not used the Lyman digital trigger gauge. I'm not sure how much better or worse this is compared to it, but uh, it's not bad. So it comes in this hard case, fits in here pretty tight. You can just shove the manual underneath. Um, I did try to put some spare batteries in there. It's pretty tight to fit uh, some spare batteries, but you can, it'll fit spare batteries. Batteries go in the back, two AAA's uh, battery cover is secured with a screw, like a kid's toy. Most of the time, you're probably just gonna use it in the peak mode. So you turn it on and basically reads off this little yellow nub and basically whatever peak value is on there in the scale, it'll hold that. And that's kind of what you want if you're trying to just do um, standard trigger pull measuring. So I'm going to delete that value. Um, so when you actually power this unit on, turn it off, well, the arm extends and rotates down to get you some clearance. Uh, when you turn it on, it will actually tear or zero the scale. The scale mechanism is all up here. It's not anywhere in here like I think some of the other digital gauges. It's all up here. So when you turn it on, it'll zero that out. So make sure there's nothing touching that when you turn it on and um, the way it works is here I've got a trigger gauge or a trigger jig uh, you basically put this on here like that and pull and then there's your brake value the cool thing about this scale is that, let me delete this. Since all of the measuring is being done up here, you can actually put this on the trigger like this and put another finger behind it like this and just pull like you normally would a trigger. Instead of trying to pull this whole gauge like you would a, you know, like a more traditional gauge. Let's delete this out again. You can actually push it with your index finger or whatever and do it that way. And that actually, from my limited usage, gets you a bit more consistent results and sometimes just a little bit easier to do because trying to pull on this thing is a little bit awkward because of all this length. And some triggers are a little bit slipperier than others. You, you might slide off the trigger or you might, you might slide onto a different part of the trigger bow that you didn't want to. Um, so yeah, that's a good thing. It um, One thing that does bug me is that the two unit modes is pounds, ounces, and kilograms. Pounds, ounces isn't all that useful to me. Um, I usually end up just converting it to, to decimal pounds. So instead of like three pounds, eight ounces, it'll be 3.5 pounds. A little bit easier to do the math on that. Um, there's no way to get into decimal pounds. It's only pounds, ounces. So what I ended up doing is just uh, making a spreadsheet with the correct formulas to do that. So I enter in the values in the spreadsheet and it converts it to me, converts it for me. Um, that's not too bad once you get into the rhythm of that because you're gonna wanna use a spreadsheet to store all your values for an averaging. This, this scale will take multiple readings and average it for you. But because of the limited display, it's kind of clunky. Um, you really don't want to be storing 
10 values in here and then have this thing average it for you and maybe you have like a a bad botched one in there and I don't believe you can delete the bad ones I'm not entirely sure I honestly haven't played with that it's a lot cleaner just to do this on a spreadsheet so that you have it for future reference or whatever um, or you can just take out some values that you think are bad um, but yeah I think that's this thing in a nutshell all right, so the next part of this video, I'm gonna talk about the accuracy of this thing. So how do you know if this thing is, is accurate? How do you know if you, if you measure a trigger and it says three pounds, 4.4 ounces? Well, how do you know how accurate that is? Is it, is it off by a little bit? Was it calibrated at the factory? Um, has the calibration from the factory drifted? Uh, you don't know that, and most people probably won't get into that kind of detail with these kind of things, but um, it's not that difficult, or at least not that expensive, to measure it, or at least to a certain degree of accuracy. So what I'm going to do with my unit is I have kind of a budget precision scale got from Amazon. I think these are like nine bucks, and... Um, these things you can actually calibrate with one of these right here. So this is a 500 gram calibration weight. And what you do is you put this thing into calibration mode, you throw this thing on there, and then it will basically determine internally, I don't know how it's doing the offset or whatever math it's doing, but it'll make whatever it thinks 500 grams is according to what it is sensing when this weight is on there. It's not great because it's only calibrating itself to one reference point, but what can you get for, you know, a $9 scale? Uh, I'm not going to get like one of those $200 bench scales that's used for scientific work. Um, it's cool, but uh, I prefer the portability of these guys. So anyway, I digress. So what I'm going to do is... Um, calibrate this guy using the standard calibration weight and then I'm going to measure I have a whole bunch of these by the way uh, this one's a 300 right there it's kind of a little bit wonky the little bottom's falling out but it still works I've got a uh, what's this one 50 grams Anyways, I've got a whole bunch of these. I got 500s, 100s, 300s, and uh, it's a little complicated, but here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna calibrate this one, and then I'm gonna go measure all those weights and make sure that they are all correct. Because you don't know, you know, how do you know if this thing's correct? Well, that's the one guess I'm taking is that I'm hoping this one's pretty close. I mean, it's a reference weight. It can't be that far off. It's not like, super duper scientific instrument, you know, uh, grade stuff, but it, it should be within like a tenth of a percent or whatever. Make sure all these weights are good. And then not even going to use this scale anymore because that's just going to be used to check my reference weights. Go to a bigger scale that has more capacity and then put the reference weights on this thing. I can't calibrate this thing, but I can at least check to see if, if this thing is within tolerance for the reference weights. So this is 500, 500. So hey, that's a good sign. That means that this scale is probably working fine. It's two 500s, a thousand. So now I'm off. If these things are right from the factory and I'm off by two grams, that means I'm off by 0.2%. That's like negligible for testing a trigger gauge. So let me put these away. So here's how I'm actually going to test this trigger gauge. I have a bucket here. It's hard to see this little Home Depot bucket. And I kind of put on this little plastic bit on the end so that it'll grab onto the trigger gauge like, like 
like so. So it's out of focus. But I can basically hang this bucket from the trigger gauge. And what I'm going to do is fill this bucket with water until I get to some specific amounts. So within the range of what I will expect this gauge to see. So probably from one pound to seven pounds. Those are kind of like the ranges that uh, triggers will, will be in. This thing will max out at 10 pounds. If you go over 10 pounds, it will yell at you saying, why? Um, so hopefully this thing is within, you know, like a couple of percent of error from this. That will give me the confidence to say that the values that I'm pulling off of this thing are, are decent, are good. Because um, without doing that, you don't know. You're just trusting, uh, trusting that uh, this $50 scale is, is decent. And, and you should be. Um, I think most people will. But just since I have all this stuff laying around, I might as well check. All right, I'm back. Um, I measured everything from half a pound to 10 pounds. Um, using the scale method that I mentioned earlier with a pail of water and this Wheeler uh, digital trigger gauge. Here's all my notes. Managed to spill water all over these. But anyways, um, you don't really need to see these numbers, but I'm just going to throw them here in case anyone thinks my math is bad. Let's get rid of these. So basically what it boils down to is this thing is decently accurate. It uh, deviated from my scale reading of the water um, from zero, which is exactly the same, to half an ounce. So the margin of error is roughly half an ounce. And then I noticed that if I turned this off and turned it on and it re teared its own uh, weight sensor, it would also fluctuate half an ounce, probably half an ounce in the right direction. So the margin of error is probably even less than half an ounce, but because no one's gonna really take that many samples, I would say it's probably half an ounce. So half an ounce error from half a pound to 10 pounds, um, very consistent throughout the whole range. I didn't see any anomalies um, in the range. so you can count that half an ounce through the whole range. Uh, that's pretty good, because no one really cares about half an ounce in a trigger pull. Um, you know, if you're off by a whole ounce, I mean, that's, that's even almost insignificant as far as trigger pull numbers. So I am confident that this is giving good values from half a pound to 10 pounds. And that's great. So all the numbers that I'm pulling from this thing, I am not going to fudge them at all. They are exactly as they will be.